I went to Mississippi. All right. What's on the back? Okay. What is something you are self-conscious about? Sometimes I'm self-conscious about my playing, actually. I know, personally, I can always be better, and I get to play with my favorite musicians all the time, with these all-star bands that I'm a part of. I always want to be the best I can be, and a lot of times I'm not self-conscious when I'm actually performing. It's more so like, uh, listening back to performances makes me a little bit self-conscious. It's kind of like the way, like if you record your voice and you listen back to your voice, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like the way I sound. That, that happens to a lot of musicians, myself included, when listening to like past performances. And a lot of times, like if I listen to something immediately after I enjoy it, or if I let a long time go by and then I listen, I'll enjoy it. But if it's just like a week or two later and I'm like steadily improving as a player, then I'm, I get a little self-conscious listening back to my own performances. I'm a fan of Fish. I love their compositions. And every time I tour, I take a different band on the road. So it's, it's cool for me because I get to listen and just hear, oh, how did we play that, you know, this song on this occasion or that song on that occasion? And how did this really awesome saxophone player interpret that solo? Or, you know, where did the improv go with this group of people versus that peop group of people? Yeah, and I was surprised that some of the guys in the band don't even listen to Fish. Yeah, so uh, when I started it, you know, I contemplated this band for a while and um, I was actually on tour with Anthony Wellington, who it, uh, he played bass for, or does play bass for Victor Wooten. Uh, Victor, you would think, why does he have another bass player? But uh, Victor likes to solo a lot, so he, he has Anthony in the band who kind of holds down the roots. And um, I was touring with Anthony, and it like hit me when I was on tour with him. I was like, how cool would it be to like have a band of people who don't listen to Fish, who are from different backgrounds, who didn't grow up with the music, who it's not like in their psyche, it's not in their DNA, but are like the world-class, top-notch musicians, and just see what they'll do. If I just show them sheet music and say, you put you into this, don't worry about what the original version sounded like, don't listen to like how they improvise over it, do you over this framework, how would that sound? And it was more of like an experiment when I first started it to see, you know, what is this gonna be? As it developed, it kind of became something for me where I wanted people who were so close to the music that they played with Fish, you know, like Kofi Burbridge on Surrender to Air, Jeff Coffin, uh, you know, when he you know, was on tour with Bela Flex, sat in with them, the Giant Country Horns guys, Dave Grippo and Carl Gearhart, you know, people who were really close to the music, um, or people who were so far from it, they had no preconceived notion. So it's kind of like a dichotomy. And there's a gray area, there's some people who um, are just tremendous musicians who grew up just like me, listening to Fish in the 90s and grew up with the music, but um, I, find it, I find it's really cool to get players who have no preconceived notions, don't listen to Fish, and then it's cool because I'm like turning them on to the music that I love um, and showing why I appreciate it so much. And then I'm also allowing fans to hear a completely different take on the music because these guys you know they don't have any preconceived notions so where they go with their solos where they go with like how they harmonize the arrangements you know I give I give everyone a, a lot of freedom to be themselves within the framework of the music now that I have all, all the things like kind of arranged and composed uh, there's no reason for a lot of these musicians to even listen to the original but when I first started it the band I needed the guys to listen to the originals because I didn't have anything for them to listen to because it was just in my brain so it's like all right listen to the original so you understand what we're doing and I remember uh, Anthony Wellington who you know is a uh, uh, He's never heard fish before. One of the first songs we did was Way, which, you know, the lyrics are like, I'd like to cut your head off so I can weigh it. Uh, and he thought that was the funniest song ever. He was like, man, this stuff is crazy. And Dog Log is in our repertoire. And, you know, I remember some guys being like, um, what's Dog Log about? It kind of sounds like someone's stepping over a pile of poop. And I was like, you know, I mean, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> but yeah, there's some, there's some interesting uh, lyrical content. And amazingly, the lyricist for Fish, Tom Marshall, has become a good friend, and he loves what we're doing. And I take that as a huge compliment, because we took all of his parts and got rid of them, uh, and he still loves what we're doing. But all, I mean, he does write a lot of the melodies uh, on the songs that he was a part of. And I think that's the, the, the barrier for a lot of people, why I wanted to do an instrumental interpretation, is to show people how amazing the music is without that barrier of like the goofy lyrics and things like that. Tell me the name of an artist that I may not be listening to that I should be listening to. Wow, there's a, there's a lot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna trickle off a few, and uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to Mike League real quick. Mike League is the bass player of Snarky Puppy, band leader, composer. 
and uh, it's a good time to shout him out. He does this thing called Ground Up Music Festival, um, and you know, I'm not paid to say this. I'm not playing there this year or anything like that. Uh, it is the place to discover music. I go to that festival every year. It's the only festival that I go to that if I'm playing or not playing, I will pay to be an attendee uh, because he just curates and finds music from around the world that are literally the most incredible musicians in the world and a lot of them are unknown or, or not well known. With that said, you know, through through that family, through that Snarky Puppy family, I, you know, came across Paris Monster. You should absolutely listen to uh, Lewis Cole and Knower. Michelle Willis um, is killing. Becca Stevens, Breast Fist. That's like one of my favorite bands. They're like a goofy band, but super killing, super vibing, funky as can be. And it's like an all-star cast of musicians that play with other people, like Alan Hampton on the bass, Bill Campbell on the drums. Like th these are cats that a lot of people don't know, but are some of the best musicians playing some of the best music ever written.